at the book of Jonah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, we thank you that we can enter into another prophet. And uh, albeit he's called a minor prophet, but with a major message to us. And Father, when you call us to do something, may we do it and not go in the total opposite direction. So bless us, Lord, that we may always be directed to you and in your direction and in your purpose and in your plan. Glory to Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Was he or wasn't he? The question has been raised, is he real or not real? So, when you deal with the early church fathers, and Orthodox Jews, which I deal with, and that's my perspective, I discover they believe he's real. In fact, Jesus mentioned him in, this, in the gospel. When you hear your, your average preaching on Jonah in the Catholic Church today, they tell you he's a story. Have we ever heard that? It's a story. Nobody heard that before? You never heard that? It's a story? He lived in the he lived in the eighth century BC. Okay, so right around the time of Hosea. Okay, he, he lived in the seventh century BC, eighth century BC. So, and also he has a grave. So if he has a grave, it's right next to Malwa, New Jersey. He has a grave, and if you've been following the news, probably like two years ago. ISIS was trying to blow it up. Remember ISIS? Yeah. Oh, by the way, they're, they're coming back for another round, so life is really exciting. Um, they try to blow up his grave. His grave is in Iraq. So with, his, with somebody being buried in that grave and ISIS blowing it up, and, and so Jesus referring to him, um, they have given you what is called the hysterical, uh, historical critical method. Okay? And uh, that's why the church is in the position she's in, because we give you historical, this could happen maybe, and when you leave church believing, well, maybe that wasn't right, how many want to hear stories from the gospel that really didn't happen? What does that do to you personally when Father X, Y, and Z says it didn't happen? Okay, it's just like, uh, you know, I don't want to be told on Sunday, I, I'm listening to, to Aesop's fairy tales and fables, mm, yeah. right? I, I, want to, I, want, I need truth. You need truth too? Yes. Amen. The word Jonah means um, Yona. Everybody say Yona. Yona. The word means dove. dove. So everybody say Yona. Yona. In Hebrew, there's no J's. So uh, during, during our sessions, we'll call him Yona. Okay, everybody got it? Yona? Okay, turn to the person and say, did you hear that? Did you hear that? It's Yona. All right, now the first time, the enemy, the enemy of the Jews is called a hawk. So, but this is, so he is called, he is called a Yona. It's the dove. Okay? So when you saw that, the first time a Yona appears is in the book of Genesis. Remember they are in the ark? Yes. And he, he let out a Yona. Okay, so the word Yona means the dove, okay? So we got 760s, we got the 8th century, we've established he's a real person, he's got a real grave, Jesus refers to him. So that's, that's the standpoint we will, we will take, okay? So if you want to believe he's fake, fake news, okay, then you go right ahead, okay? And you're off my Christmas list too, so I mean several things have happened. So let's start it right away. As you can see, it's very, very short, extremely short. Now the story is he's going to take off in, in a town called Joppa. Peter had his miracle. So you have a whole town in Israel dedicated to him. And in fact, when you go to the public square, there's a big gigantic, what is it, marble? Uh, uh, of, there's a big fish in there. Perhaps the reason why people believe this is only fable is because how can a man be swallowed by a big fish and say lunch? 
Okay, how can he live in how can he live inside of it? So that's why we hear ghost stories. Amen? And what we have just discovered, it is possible. I don't recommend it for anybody to try to live in one because you'll never have a fish sandwich for the rest of your life. Amen? And when he, when, when he got burped out, it was really a mess. He smelled, I mean, he took 25 showers and one day he couldn't get rid of that fish smell. Amen. How many ever have how many ever had a fishy fishy smell? Amen. I take um I take what is it, fish oil? Oh it's disgusting. And accidentally I bit into it the other day. I thought I, I thought I was in a fish market. I went, Ooh, okay, so he um, in the Bible there are four major prophets. Does anybody know who they are? Very good. You're getting an A. My mother said you're a smart girl. You take the word Jedi, J-E-D-I, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah. Now there are 12 minor prophets. The minor prophets can be found in your table of contents from this all the way down. So all 12, they're called minor because, for one reason, they're called minor because we have little information on them. They're called major because the books are huge, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's major prophets and there's minor prophets. Señora, saludos en nombre de Jesús. Okay, now, Jonah, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise. And now everybody right in there, by verse 2, he gets the word of resurrection. Everybody know the resurrection? What, what word in Hebrew did, did you hear, sister? Kum. Q U M. Now, when Jesus tells people to get up, like the the in Mark chapter one, the um, Peter's mother-in-law, she she the word was arise, and and it's the same word used in the resurrection. Okay, so if you underline the word there, kum, arise, bum 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 ba ba bum. Okay, arise. Everybody say arise. 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 Go to Nineveh. Now, where's Nineveh, everybody? Iraq. Okay, now this is, this is um, the capital city back then, right? It wasn't Baghdad. It was Nineveh. Now, Nineveh gets repented for a very brief century and a half. Because in 612, it is absolutely wiped away. And that's why, here's a book almost nobody ever refers to in your Bible. You probably sort of, hopefully heard of it, Nahum. Did you ever hear of Nahum? Yes. yes. Nahum is right next door to Mawa. You ever hear of Nahum? Yes. Nobody heard of it? Yeah. Or you might say Nahum. Mm -hmm. It's right next to, it's right next to, um, uh, it tells you it was wiped out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to read... And what's the message right there? Nineveh is, you're going to get your chance now, but it was, it was the last ditch effort for Nineveh because they were all gone. The book of Nahum, you can read it very quickly before you go to bed tonight. It's three little baby chapters again. So if we want to have like a follow-up story to this, we can flip to Nahum. And chapter four, which we could probably even get to tonight, but I doubt it. And chapter four, the book doesn't end. There's no end to it. It just kind of ends like, that's it. And we're going to say, that's it. That's all we have. So we have, we have the Ninevites. It was a great city. Every underline, great. It was a great mega. It's a mega city. The word in Hebrew for it is called Gadol. G-A-D-O-L. It's a Gadol Ear, a gadol ear. It's a big city. And it would take how many days to go around it? Three. Now we're going to see why Jesus uses this to give us warning that if you don't believe in the message of Jonah, you're not going to believe my words. And what's the message? Repent. Here's the message. You've got to go to your enemies. Does anybody here ever have an enemy? Yes. You ever had an enemy? 
And you gotta go up to them and say, Love and kisses, love and kisses, da na da, love and kisses. And you gotta go to them and say, Mwah. I love you. I love you. And so now Jonah gets the word from on high. Jonah, Jonah, yes. Go tell those people in Nineveh that I love them. And he says, no. How many ever said no to God? Everybody shake your head, yes. We all said no. How many ever heard a clear word of God and you said no? So what he does, God tells him to go that direction. He goes that direction. All right, now here's Joppa where St. Peter is going to have his what? St. Peter, if you want to follow and, and do the follow-up, Acts chapter 10, because kind of the same story happens. He's, God says, Peter, yeah, go to Cornelius, 64 miles away. Did you see the spot where Peter baptized him in, on the sea? But have you seen the spot where Peter baptized him? Peter went in and took 300 pictures of just the the, uh, the steps. <laughs> Where was the spot? The spot was in Caesarea, in Caesarea by the sea. There's a spot right there where Peter baptized him. And right a few yards away where Paul got in the boat and sailed toward Rome. Do you remember that? You don't remember that. All right, I, I, I got to point these things out to you. So get that camera going, man. Get that camera going, too. Is Cosmolina ready? She's ready to go? Okay, so um, Joppa was kind of the same story. Go baptize Cornelius. He says, no. And then God appeared to him and said in Italian, manja, manja, manja. Ita, ita, ita. He says, no, I'm a Jew and you're not supposed to eat those things. God says, I said, eat it. No. And so Peter finally got converted because the Gentiles were his what? Enemies. Now, how many know now what's involved when Jesus says love your enemies? Do you love your enemies, ma'am? No. <laughs> okay. Does everybody here love your enemies? Did you send them Christmas cards yet? Love and kisses? Amen. Did you love your enemies, senora? Do you got to love your enemies? Everybody shake your head. Yes. Do you love your boss, sir? Boy. Sure. Do you love the Boston Red Sox? No. All right, so now, arise, go to the end of the great city and cry against it. Okay, now, cry means quite loud. So when you're a prophet, it sounds like a little bit like John the Baptist. You got to scream at it. Repent! I hope not. Repent! I hope not. <laughs> Because you're my enemy, and if you don't, if you go to the cooker, that's okay with me. Because did you ever get mad in your older, your younger life and say, go to H-E double toothpick? <laughs> Some call it H-E double to hockey sticks. All right, amen. Richie Cunningham from Happy Days. Now, so how many have ever wished, now, growing up, I grew up as an American, and every time you mention the word Russia, I said, they're boo, they're the devil. I thought, we're of God and they're of the devil. Of course, that's wrong, bad theology, amen? So what is it going to do? Cry! So what, why is it cry? So they could what? Hear you. So what did John the Baptist do out in the desert? He cried out. Yes. Now, how many think if he went to local churches and they're all like this? <laughs> all right? And they're like dying. Do you think they would have heard? John was the camel skin going up and down. Get wake up! You repent of your sins. And you know what the old lady would say? You repent. <laughs> For their wickedness has come before me now. Remember I told you many times, wickedness is usually a sign in the Old Testament that they're not going to make it. But here's a, here's a rare case that they do. Just for a short time, 612 BC, they're gone. The book of what? Nahum. So what was God doing? And this is what God's doing to every church, I believe. He's gathering the sharif. He's gathering the remnant. Those who believe will come. Those who don't believe will stay. Amen? 
So now, remember I said wickedness all throughout the Bible, wicked people don't go to God. So there's just a few, right? Sounds like a little bit John, uh, Genesis 19. Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah. How many made it out? Very, very few. How many got on the ark? Eight. How many would like to be up there? 150 days with Kathy's dog up there. Right? And didn't have $300 pills back then. So, you know, they, they, it rained 40 days and then the water receded for 150. You got the picture? So after 40 days, they just didn't go off. I'm like, let's go here. No, they're up there for another 150 days. Then they had to send out their Yonah. Yes? Then he says to us there, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, where's the wickedness? If you remember that expression, the come up before me, you can see the same expression in Exodus chapter 3, when God says about Egypt, I'm coming down because their wickedness goes before me. Right now, the wickedness is going before God. I personally believe we cannot be sustained too much longer. So I tell Rachel, get ready, you're going to see Jesus in your day. Amen. Get ready. And the kids start crying, I want to be a grandmother. <laughs> All right, I don't know if that's going to happen. So. But verse number three. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He says, I'm out of here. One thing about being a prophet, there's no prophet in it. The word for prophet is Nabi, N-A-B-I. N-A-B-I. So this Nabi says, no. In fact, over here is Nineveh. Nineveh. Okay? Here's Joppa. And he's got to go this way. And so here's Joppa, where Peter is going to be. And what does he do? He goes this way. Now, going that way, where's Tarshish? It's in Cadiz, Spain. It's all the way to the, really, they would think the end of the world. They could have floated to New Hampshire or something like that, you know? And, but they didn't, so it's Cadiz, Spain. Have you been to Cadiz? Yeah, to Switzerland. Cadiz, okay, it's in Cadiz, Spain. And I, just, I haven't been to Cadiz yet, but I wonder if they had a little dedication to Jonah in Cadiz. Well, we did, St. James was there as well. Okay, so that's, as James was there. So they wanted to go to, he wanted to go to, see where he's going? This direction. But God had to turn him in this direction. Now, one thing about God, how many here thank God that I'm not God? Because I would have, I would have knocked him out and said, you don't want it, baby? Gone. Now, God calls everybody in this room to do a task. If you don't do it, you will be miserable. For example, there's one man I met, and I told him at the ripe old age of 18, God's called you to be a priest. Now that he's not a priest, you know what he says? I should have been a priest. Okay? And he, he, now he wants to be a priest. I said, well, you've got some problems to overcome there. Amen? One is you're getting too old, baby. Baby, it's cold outside. So now, he, he, if you don't live the call on your... Here's a personal message for you. If you didn't live the call on your life, you can still go to heaven, but you're going to have a lot of misery getting there. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes the people you married, you didn't have me interview them. You jumped the gun. And you said, you know, there you were, 21. I am 21. I know what I'm doing. No one can tell me what to do. Right? Anybody been there before? Yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So now, you can still go to heaven, but now because of your decision, there's a... Con now, if I were God, I would give up on this dude and get a Jonahette or something like that. Amen? So guess what? Did God do that? No. Jonah, I want you to do it. I don't want to. Amen? Like, I don't want to come on Saturday. Hmm. I don't want to do that. So what happens now, so he says, I'm out of here. Good stuff? Does, does that speak to anybody here? If you find yourself thinking, I should have done something, but instead I got married, I had a son called David. That was an interesting expression. We didn't have a David, amen? So, 
Very interesting. Amen? So, let's go on. Good stuff? Then he says there, he went down to Joppa. Everybody underline Joppa there. And that's where St. Peter was. Acts, you can put in there, Acts chapter 10. It goes down, at the, because Peter has the same story. You've got to talk to people when God wants you to, ready? Anybody want to follow God? Yes. All right, you've got to talk to people who don't want to be talked to. Secondly, you've got to talk to people who are your enemies. Ooh. Thirdly, you've got to talk to people who, if you never visited them ever, that would be okay. So how many are ready to take on that job? Okay? And when they come and see them, when you come and see them, like, I really don't want you here. Why are you here? The first time I started door-to-door -door evangelization, I said, uh, we're here to announce the gospel to you. The guy said, get out of here. <laughs> And I said, God, this evangelization business, forget it. So a little 80-year-old woman puts her foot in the door and says, we're coming in. And I got behind her and I said, yeah. <laughs> what she said. Yeah. Go ahead, Irene. Go, How's your karate chops? Go ahead. Yeah. And because of Irene's insistence, the whole family came to Christ. And there was a miracle right in our midst. One of the young ladies, a, a teenager, she bent her arm back that day in gym, and her whole hand swelled up. We prayed over it, and it went back to normal, <laughs> right in front of our eyes. I went, whoa, Irene, I'm sticking with you. <laughs> but I'm walking behind you. <laughs> so here's Joppa. Okay, Joppa. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. Tarshish! Everybody want to go to Tarshish? Get on board! I mean, what's the likelihood of going to the opposite end? So that's how we left him. He, he totally wanted to be on the opposite ends. You got it? And they were really, really, really distant. Now, what God's going to do is going to turn him around and vomit him, right? I mean, <laughs> and, 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 and we know how long the will took. It's going to be three days. <laughs> and you, you, got, you got the picture? <laughs> He's going to have... He's going to have a whale of a time. <laughs> so he pays the fare. So notice he's losing money over this adventure. Uh -huh. And went on board to go with him to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Okay? No yawning. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he wants to get away from the presence of God. How many know we, we like to do that a lot? When you feel miserable, you're away from the presence of God. So how many, how many felt an emptiness in you? You walked out of the presence of God. And how many know, because you're all believers in Jesus, how many know you'll sense that right away when you walk away from the presence of God? Right away. Something's wrong, you know, where's God? But the, but the Lord held a great wind upon the sea. Now, they're going to Tarshish. You got the picture? Here's Joppa. And they're going, this way. And I wonder how, much, how many shekelim he had to pay. And he's going this way. And all of a sudden, the voyage of, of following not God is treacherous. Let me give you another scripture to back me up. Luke 15 with the prodigal. He starts spending, you know. They're taking the marriage of man. They're having a good time, man. They're going to Yankee games in the luxury suite. Um, they meet Susan Wallman, and, and, and they're just having a good time. And all the money's going, going, going. And they fly first class and, and, and no more cattle class. And then he discovers all the money's gone. And then bad times hit. So now, as soon as you go away from God, you're going to meet interesting times. How many ever imagined the times you met? Why? Because you made a wrong decision. Anybody ever make a wrong decision here? Yes. Well, let's change the conference for those who made a wrong decision. Amen. Okay. And, and, and sometimes it's really hard to... Uh, so what do, we, what do we do now? We have all these self-help classes and recovery groups and everything else because we, some of us made wrong decisions. Oh, but we can't have you feel guilty. No, 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 no. So look at verse 4. But the Lord held a wind, great wind. How do you say great? Godot. Godot. Now look at the word for great city. Look at the word, verse 4, for great. See the greats? Now you're going to see that word come up and it means you're going to get it, baby. You get the sense? 
So you got to look when you study the Bible for repeated words. See the word great? See the word great? Okay? So you know that God is a little upset with him. God, I don't know why you picked him, amen? I don't know why you picked me. And okay. upon the sea, and there was a mighty, see the, see the word mighty again? Yeah. Tempest on the sea, so that the a fish threatened to break up. All right, this is really getting... And, and what was Jonah praying? No. He was not praying at all. You know? You know, he, he didn't care. When you disobey God, there's an emptiness in your spirit. So you can even go through the storms and say, Oh, oh, a fire. They just found in one of the places today, bones. And you know what they said? It's an animal's bones. So one of the, one of the dogs died. It wasn't a human being, thanks be to God. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. How many know that when you're really in a dire situation, you cry to your God? Yes. So yes. now, you'll call God. What, what does he say? There's no uh, atheists in foxholes? <laughs> right. right? So now they're crying out to God, and they all call upon, Oh, Baal, Balim. You know, one Baal and two Baals is Balim. Two Balim. One, one and one is one and three, three Balim, okay? So they're crying out to their gods. And back then they worshipped what? Baal. B-A-A-L. Remember I told you it was a black statue? And they, 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 they put a grill underneath and then you put a baby on top. Okay, we call that abortion today. And they thought they had to offer. So on the way, they, they start, Baal, Baal, Baal. Now Baal, you know, interesting when they call upon Baal, he was a fertility god. So, I mean, they're not going to get pregnant out there, I'll tell you that much, amen. So all of this is coming against, against, so call upon your God, call upon your God. Okay, now where does this sound familiar? Because the century before that, uh, in, the, in the 9th century BC, there was a prophet called Elijah. In 1 Kings 18, they were having a contest. Now, how many want to be saved? How many want to know what the message for the rest of your life is? The message for the rest of your life is, what do you believe about God? Your view versus the other views. We have a, we have a Hindu girl in our class, and she already started on me. What about those who aren't Christians? Will they go to heaven? I said, yes, through Jesus. And she went, you can see her, you know, if I could draw a question mark around her face. I said, Jesus. And then I even mentioned, every, if you get any idols, it's called idolatry. So she's like, and this is her first year with us. So she, she's getting a dose of, don't follow Hindus. Though I didn't say that, because they'll run home and they'll, they'll cream me, right? amen? But under my breath, don't follow Hinduism. Okay, no. okay so now everybody's calling upon their God. And then uh, they, they threw the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Because they thought it was heavy. And so what was happening to the boat? Now, what does God want to do on boats? Let's go into the New Testament. He wants to teach us a lesson. What does God do on boats? He gets the hell scared out of you. Amen? <laughs> you get it, right? Yes. Now when the disciples, Matthew 8, had, they're on this little boat, it's about from that wall to that wall, and it's about 15 feet. You got the picture of it? Yes. You can see a picture of it when you go to Israel. Even though we're not going to look at it, Brother Peter. You've seen it. Yeah. We're going on a boat with 100 people to praise the Lord on top of the boat. So now what happens there is... Um, the Lord sent a wind this way, the Lord sent a wind this way, the Lord sent a wind this way, and the Lord sent a wind this way. How many know, what, what did their boat look like? I mean, if that happens to us, hit the deck and say, Jesus, amen, amen. So it was really bouncing. So can you see similar stories? This, this is a great story, amen. And then he says to and what did they do? They cried, they threw the words, but Jonah had gone down into the inner part. <sighs> Underline that, but Jonah. But Jonah. And he had laid down. Does it and fell fast asleep? Does this sound familiar? <laughs> now watch this. This is really good. In the Old Testament, and once in the New Testament, and with Peter, 
How many of they all what? Fell asleep. What happened to Peter in Joppa? Fell asleep. What happened to Jesus on the boat? Fell asleep. Now this is called a tar dema. T-A-R D-E-M-A-H. Everybody say a tardema. Okay. T-A-R-D-E-M-A-H. A tardema. Now when God it means fall asleep. When God does a, a really knocks you out, a tardema. How many ever woke up and you had a great dream and you didn't want to wake up? <laughs> I want to go to bed tonight and say, Lord, I want part two. <laughs> Did let's you ever say up, that? Let's yeah. pick up yeah. where we left. Yeah, the dream was so good. And I dream, by the way, I dream in color. <laughs> yeah. So this is called a tardama. A tardama means God is going to intervene. The first tardama was Genesis chapter 2. Who had the first tardama? Adam. And then all of a sudden, the Lord took out the rib. How many ribs do you have? Twelve. Our friend had 13, God took it out, and he felt a little light, lost a few pounds, and then he saw a beautiful woman come in, and he went in Hebrew, va, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see those women coming after you, Brother David? Remember when you were 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, and David said, whoa, baby, whoa, baby. <laughs> so Brother David spoke fluent Hebrew back then. So he had his heart on the, there she was, standing there, the, oh, whoa, baby, whoa, baby, it's cold outside, whoa, baby. And so that's called a tardama. The first tardama is when Eve starts walking toward him. Now, when Jesus is on the boat, Matthew 8, he has a what? Tardama. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. He has a tardama. And what does he, what does he want? He wanted his disciples to walk toward him. Did they? Yes. Here's what they said. Get up! <laughs> and, and the Lord went, hmm. hmm. How, how, many, how, many, how many go nuts when somebody comes out of bed and you need them and they're like, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> now, does that drive you nuts? Did you ever see that before? I, 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 I lost the thermometer, my plumbing's going all over the place. What do you mean, what's going on? What do you need? So Jesus now has a tardama in the boat. And what did he want to happen? Exactly what happened? The disciples to walk toward him. Did he want it that melodramatic? These are men who worked with Peter, melodramatic. We're dying! Look at those waves! And the Lord under his breath going, okay. And, and he, so here comes, Jesus had a tardama. Did anybody ever hear, have a tardama? That means if you had a tardama, it means you woke up with a sense of direction. Amen? Or you're getting married tomorrow. I mean, did you ever wake up with a tardama? Amen? This is a, so put in there, tardema. If you were to read the, the Hebrew, it's T-A-R-D-E-M-A-H. Amen? Mm -hmm. See, th this is why we need this. And so Jonah went gone down to the inner part, so he really wanted to be away. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a minute, that boat, can, that boat can burst and out comes the water, and he was like, okay. Now, what does it mean that he goes to the inner part? Jesus says to us in Matthew 6, when you pray, go to your inner part. Go to your inner room. Do you remember that? Yes. Go to your, in Matthew 6. So what does it mean for each of us to go to our inner part? Uh, you know, sometimes you just want to get away from the crowd. And you just got to close your door and get into your inner part. Anybody know where your inner part is yet? Okay, have you been there? And this is where you do all the thinking. I'm reviewing the situation. Okay? And you start thinking. And then you, set, you, you, you have your whole dialogue when you're going to blast that person and everything else. Do you ever do that? Everybody shake your head yes. Amen? Good stuff? All right, so now, everybody circle the word inner part. So now, if, we, if we're getting really spiritual now, he goes into his deep thoughts. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? 
Now, interestingly, Paul tells us, uh, hold your spot with me. This is very interesting, amen? So, uh, for, for Peter's sake, we'll, 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 we'll extend this so you get all the juice out of it. All right, everybody go to chapter 5 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. 163, Brother Peter. Everybody with me? Yes. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Now, Paul is talking about the darkness that you experience. When you go to your inner chamber, what time is it when you go to sleep, everybody? Usually. It's usually nighttime, right? Usually? Yes. Usually? Yes. Okay. Because of my, my weird sleeping abilities, uh, <laughs> I go to bed any time. <laughs> my favorite time is when I go visit the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm doing my holy hour. <laughs> and you know what helped me with that? Paul Chain says, I did a lot of holy hours. I snored all the way through it. I look at my watch. Bing! You got an hour, Lord. I'm out of here. All right. Okay, I, I did my holy hour. All right, now, Anthony does two and three hours in the morning. You know, Anthony, you call him Elijah, whatever the heck his name is. Therefore it is said, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Amen? Amen. Now, everybody see that? Chapter 5, verse 14. So, what, what is he going to do is wake us up. So the captain realizes, and this drives them nuts, somebody's missing. Well, we're going to try to maintain. Don't you want all hands on deck to save us? Now, there's going to be a similar story with St. Paul on the boat in Acts 27. Here's what God said to him before he got on the boat. God said to him, God says, look, Paul, you're going to stand in front of the Roman <coughs> emperor. But guess what happened on, for two weeks? There were a two-week storm. And so, and what happened to the boat? It broke up. And what happened when they got to Malta? A snake wrapped around his hand. So, I mean, this is really exciting. And I, I just have friends of mine that they want me to preach in Malta. Okay, to Malta. Doom, 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 doom. Get ready, Brother Peter. We're taking you places. I'm quitting for you tomorrow, Brother Peter. All right, so now, battle me to Jonah. Everybody battle me to Jonah? So the captain came and said, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise. All right, now, circle the word arise. Look at verse number six. Everybody see verse six? Now look at verse number two. Yes, arise. All right, how do you say that again? Kum. Q-U-M. Kum. It also means to come. Kum. So when you are resurrected, you are coming, okay? So do you see a lot of repeats all of a sudden? Yes. What did God say? Arise. So now this is, this is very interesting because this is a pagan person saying to him, Prophet of whoever God you believe in, arise! Come, baby, come. So did you see the, the come repeated? What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. I mean, our God isn't working. <laughs> now, how many know, how many have kids? How many ever heard of kids? <laughs> when, when they're 17, 18, they're called aliens. By the way, they just discovered, a couple of light years away, a brand new earth. You didn't hear that on the news today? No kids, no, no kids. They just discovered a brand new earth out there. They didn't see anybody on it, but uh, six light years away. Six light years away, they discovered a brand new earth. Okay, so they're seeing a lot of alien ships coming through Arizona these days. So, so interesting, okay? So, um... Next, he says there, I'm called upon your God. Why? Our God isn't working. Now, this is the same thing. What's going to happen to you? How many have interest in kids? And you say to your kids to pray, and they go, yeah, right. And all of a sudden, everything's going wrong, and they'll say to you, Mom and Dad, pray. Anybody ever hear that? 
they, they put you down for praying, right? When things go bad, they tell you to pray. Did, did they ever happen yet? It happened to you? I was told to say the rosary for the test. Oh, but now, now he doesn't want the rosary. But when he needs it, mom, rosary. Hit, hit your knees, mom. Fall on your knees. Okay, give you a little Christmas. And then he says, that perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we don't perish. Now, interestingly, circle the word perish. Now, how many ever heard this one? John three sixteen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish. Now, do you understand what perish means? It means to be totally wiped out. Okay, totally destroyed. And so, now, what saves people? What saves people? Why is this globe still spinning? Because of you. Amen? Why does your family keep on going? It's because of you. Because you believe in God. Why isn't your family wiped out? Because of you. Because in Matthew 5, 48, it's going to rain on the just and on the unjust. You are just men and women. Amen? Made perfect in holiness through Jesus Christ. Amen? So, uh, when, I, when I was... Uh, I got a call to visit somebody in the hospital. And I got there, and they were Jewish. I said, did you call them? She said, yes. She says, get in there. I said, where? <laughs> My husband. I said, um, ma'am, <laughs> is he Jewish? Of course he is. Get in there. I'll take any God right about now. <laughs> oh, see. I said, I said, um, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah, that too. I, 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 I'm happy to be here. But, but, I got to tell you something. What? I only pray in the name of Jesus. I don't care who you are. You want Buddha, you want everything. Jesus, get in there. So he was all, with all these machines on him. And I took his hand and I said, pray with me. Jesus will give you life. <laughs> oh, sure. So, Intubated. <laughs> and so I prayed in the name of my God. Mm -hmm. I can't stand when people say, my God. My God. I said, my God says this. Well, I don't like what your God says, so I'm making up my own God. I said, you can. You are sincerely wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So... So I, I, so did I you die? I, nobody dies on my watch. <laughs> so what's the deal? Did he die? I don't know. But I did pray with him to accept Jesus' personal Lord and Savior and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I do interesting things. Amen? Come now. And they said to one another, verse 7, Good stuff. Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil come upon. Now the Jews had a process of casting lots. And it was called Urim and Thummim. White marbles and the black marbles. And so when the high priest went in, he would say, Oh God, oh God, whose fault is it? Oh God. And you'd jiggle around the, the, the marbles. If it was white or black, is it Peter's fault? <laughs> so you got a white one or a black one, all right? That's how they were getting, God only just gave them with through Orm and Thummim, a yes and no. The last casting of the lots was on Pentecost. On Pentecost. So now, somehow, they believed in this. Come let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and it fell to Jonah. <laughs> and they looked at him. You! You did it. Amen? You did it. Okay? How many of you ever said to a person, it's your fault? Nobody? Yes. <laughs> Remember? How many know that's the, our first time we were, when you run away, anybody ever run away? Shake your head yes. You've got to blame somebody. And of course, it's never your fault. Shake your head yes. So when you're thinking in your inner room, whose fault is it? So what did Adam say? The woman. A woman. She did it. God went to the snake. Whose fault was it? The snake. Well, honey, wake up. If a snake starts talking to you, there's a problem. So the man said, woman. The woman said, the snake. 
Now, how many have ever done this? You blame God. He did. He Adam did. The woman you put here. You did. You got it? And they're both running, they're streaking through the Garden of Eden, which all of a sudden the fruit starts wilting. All right, wilting. So, so they cast lots and they block all upon Jonah. And so they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? Um, uh, what do you do for a living? I work in uh, uh, the mall. I don't know. What, what, now, what's your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? Because you don't look like one of us. You don't speak our lingo, baby. And he says, I am a Hebrew. Ooh. Now, whoa, every, somebody say, whoa. Whoa. Ani Iberu. Let me write it on the board. A N I I. Iberu. E P I R U. Everybody got it? Everybody got it? Ani Iberu. Whoa. Now, what does the word Hebrew mean? Crossing the river. Where's the river? Back by Nineveh. Whoa. Whoa, are you getting... By the way, what river did they cross? The Euphrates. What, what, what river shows up in the book of Revelation? The Euphrates. Hmm. How many river stories do you know in the Bible? Hmm. They're now? No, they're, they're sailing down the Mediterranean. They're going to the Mediterranean and they're heading toward Cadiz, Spain. He's going to do some flamingo dancing and eat uh, and have some uh, have some flan. What's that? I said, he says, Ani, did you write down I? A and I, Ani, everybody say Ani. Now he says, I'm Hebrew. E P I R U. Everybody got that? Iparu. So everybody say Ani, Iparu. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Now, what does Hebrew mean? Crossing it means the crossing the river. When the Jews were coming in through Abraham, what river did they cross? They crossed the Euphrates. What city is near the Euphrates? Nineveh. Nineveh. Are you getting this? What? Now, what does his name mean? Crossing the river. So what does the word Jewish mean? The first time that word Ibaru is mentioned is in Genesis 10. There's 70 nations. See if you can find it in there. It's E-B-E-R, Ibaru. Okay? Is this incredible? Amen? You, you seeing the background in the background now with me? Okay. Yes, sir? Euphrates is one of the rivers that flows out of the garden. Yes. Yes. Good stuff? Yes. You seeing the connection? How could you get this by reading this by yourself? Okay. See all the juice you're missing? All right, next he says there, good stuff. He, um, he says we've got a few minutes left. And he says there, um, I, uh, where do you come from? I fear the Lord. Now, if, if you, I'll give you the Hebrew word for fear. Y A R, Yare. Ani Yare Adonai. I fear the Lord. Now, what's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 2. The fear of the Lord is the what? Beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 1, 7. Now, what does it mean when I say, I fear the Lord? I don't ever want to offend Him. Hello? Hey, knucklehead, hey. You're going in the opposite direction. How many have ever driven in the opposite direction? When you go visit Avon, I mean, sometimes you're, the, the roads are so confusing. And sometimes I knew I had to turn around when I wound up by Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I, I knew it was time to turn directions. Amen? How many have ever driven and you thought you were going in the right direction? Uh, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. ha has that ever happened to you before? Yeah. Everybody shake your head and you're like, 
and you don't got time to spare. So now he says to us, he says, who are you? What country? I fear, this is, come on, what's happening to him? I fear the Lord. Hello, Yonah. Hello, you dove. You white feathered bird. What do you mean you fear the Lord? Because you have the beginning of wisdom. Come on. What kind of prophet are you? Amen. Next line. He says there, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Now Bach said in there, the God of heaven. When you talk to a person who doesn't believe in God, what do you call him? Do you say his name is Jesus? Of course you could do that. But what's the starting point of all belief? He's the God of heaven and earth. He is the God of heaven and earth. Do you see it here? Let me give you, let me give you a scripture. If you go back with me, hold your spot, travel back with me to Genesis 14. Is this making sense to you? Am I going slow enough for you to capture this? All right, because you want to get all the juice out of it. Are you getting this, ma'am? All right. All right, Genesis 14. When he says to us there, go down to verse 17. Who wrote Genesis? Moses. Everybody with me in Genesis 14? Yes. Now watch how when God is introduced, Go all the way down to uh, verse 19. Let me see. Genesis 14, 19. This is one of the names that God is introduced by. Blessed be Abram, which means Father exalted, by God most high. There it is, maker of heaven and earth. So Melchizedek walks in because God's name is not really known by anybody then. So he says, blessed be Abram by God, the Most High, who made heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. So when you call El Elyon, you got, when you start preaching to people, like if, if, uh, I, I never really encountered it, I never had anybody going through RCIA where they didn't know that there was a God. Mm -hmm. But technically, I would have to start there. If I was on the missionary fields, I want what you have, I would have to start, well, it starts with one God. So what's your first session? One God. So now, Jonah is talking, Ani Ebu, Ani Yare Adonai. I fear God. And then I should be very wise because you fear God. Does everybody here fear God? Yes. You should be incredibly wise, are you? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to have a no, laughing break now. No, you're not. I guess I don't fear God enough. All right, amen. You're close, but you don't have to go on. Good stuff. Now, back with me to Jonah, please. Jonah. And he says, And then the men were exceedingly afraid. Now, if I make a declaration, how many want to get people scared? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. You just stand up in front of all of Trevor's friends. And you raise your right hand. You gotta get melodramatic. And watch Trevor's face, of course. <laughs> I fear the living God. Mom. <laughs> How many know people would step back, right? <laughs> and, 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 Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm doing this purposely to give you hints. Now watch this. Watch this. Let me give you some Hebrew here. The men were exceedingly afraid. Now, have, remember we're reading this. Do you see all the extreme words? Yeah. Now, everybody write in there, me'od, M-E-O-D. So this is, now, when you have exceedingly afraid, here's what it looks like in Hebrew. They're afraid, afraid. So the word exceedingly doesn't exist there. So what is our translator into English? What does Korean say? Do they, do they do that too? See, it doesn't exist. So when you translate this ancient language into English, we got to throw in one of our words. Mm -hmm. Because how do you translate um, afraid, afraid? Do we miss that word? No, we, we got to substitute it with the whole sense of what it means. So we say exceedingly afraid. So the word is me'od. 
that means exceedingly, but that word doesn't exist there, so they would double, double the problem, okay? Everybody see it? Mm -hmm. So now notice, this is already very intense. A great city, a great crime, a great problem, a great, a great storm, all this, you see what's happening? And how many know, if we don't follow God, you're going to experience that, okay? I just want to show you how they, how they write this in Hebrew. Because I think it has a message for us. Amen? So every time you see the word exceedingly, it's a repeat of the same word. Okay, just for your information. When you look at, when you're reading the Bible, and you see exceedingly, it means a word has been repeated. But we don't speak like that, so they've got to put it into modern English. How does your Bible have it, Miss Caffeine? Well, I don't know where it is at. You don't know where it is now. You lost the Lord Verse 10. How does it happen? It says, the men were exceedingly afraid. Exceedingly, okay. said to him, yeah. Now, what, what is this you have done? Now, everybody look, at, everybody look at our theology today. When something goes wrong, don't we say, what have we done, right? Mm -hmm. what, how many have ever said to somebody, what have we done? Mm -hmm. Amen? Fess up, baby. Fess it. And so, so what, what have we done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord. They knew that they were running from God. Our God. Because their God didn't act like that. Then their, their, their God was destroying themselves, right? Because he had told them. But then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? I, I love his response. Duh, uh, duh, uh. Well, the sea grew more and more tempestuous. See the increase? Yes. See the flash of lightning? Okay. So it's getting more and more tense out there. And, and he said to them, take, I mean, this guy is not all there. Take me up and throw me into the sea. <laughs> Do you think this was called Jonah's suicide mission? No. <laughs> Now, circle the word throw. It means to cast with a violence. Whoa. How many remember when you were a little girl? Do you remember those days? You were really wild even oh, then. Yes. Did anybody ever take you like this? Go one, two, <laughs> ah! <laughs> you, you got the picture? Yeah. No, but they did do like one, two. They went, <laughs> And it's lightning, and there he goes, ah! <laughs> See what happens when you leave UPS? Ah! <laughs> Amen? Amen? You, you get a picture? How many would like to have seen this on real? I, I'm convinced when we, Lord, when we all go to heaven, we're going to see this on God's real lifetime DVD. <laughs> the real movie. When we meet Jonah, remember Fulton Sheen always had a joke? Oh, what if Jonah isn't there? You know, if Jonah's not in heaven, I love Fulton Sheen says, well, you ask him. <laughs> if he's not there, worry. If, he's, if you think he's down in the cooker, you ask him. If he's not there. You don't remember that Fulton Sheen joke? All right. Uh, what shall we do that you may quiet down for us? For he grew more and more. He said, take me up and throw me into the sea. The sea will quiet down for you. And for I know it is because of me that this... See the word great again? Yeah. I see the word great? See all the connections? See how it's really, really... When you read this in Hebrew, the Jews go nuts because it's so intense. So when you read... When they're reading the words, they're... Okay. Look at, look at Jonah. Jonah's having a bad time of it. Everything is very, very, very tough. It's extremely... <laughs> and you thought you just had to sit on Route 17. No, this is very, very tough. This is for Yona. Amen? <laughs> you getting the whole sense here? So that's why we're connecting all these words. There's another Gadol. Everybody say Gadol. 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 Nevertheless, uh, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not because the disobedient, reluctant one was going away and God wasn't going to let him go. Mm. So throw him in and there's a surprise package underneath. So what does he say? Just kill me. Just kill me. I mean, this is not a nice guy. Amen? Nevertheless, the man wrote hard, verse 13. The sea grew more and more. See it? You can see the more and more? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay. Then, therefore, they cried to the Lord. Huh. Hey. <laughs> it's because you're not listening to your God. So guess what they do? They get holy. God of Jonah, where are you? God of... So they start now to get a little ounce of evangelization. Because they knew it was him not obeying his God. Here's what they say. We beg you. Now how do you say beg in Hebrew? How many ever heard the word Hosanna? Now everybody write in there the word na. N-A-H. My favorite part of the word Hosanna is na. Which means I beg you. So when you see your interesting kids just say na Trevor. Na. N-A-H. 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 Are you getting this? N-A-H, N-A-H. No, nah, no, nah, we beg you. Okay, everybody put it, see where it says beg? Everybody put it, no. Nah. You, O oh Lord, let us not perish for this man's life. Because what were they doing? They were taking a life. And what happens? You've got to answer with taking a life. They already knew it deep within their spirit, even though they didn't follow the true God, yes? And lay not us innocent blood. Does this sound familiar? What did the Jews say when Jesus was in the courtyard? Be on us. By the way, they said a very dangerous thing back then. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Let his blood be upon us. O oh Lord, for as it please you. Now, what does it mean to please? There's the not in there again. So they took up Jonah. Goodbye, goodbye Jonah. Goodbye Jonah. Goodbye Jonah. We're glad to see you go. They threw him into the sea. Now, how do you say sea in Hebrew? This is, and you think about it on, when you have your dinner on Thursday. This is a yam. Y A M. So put in there yams. So they threw them into the yam. Now, let's give you an image of the sea. Is this making sense to everybody? Everybody following? Yes. All right, now, when you're thrown into the sea, how many remember in Luke 17, if you go to daily mass, you probably heard it. Jesus said, a millstone around your neck and thrown into the sea. The sea is one of the worst images Jesus could have ever offered to us because it's dark and you don't know what's in there. For example, did you ever go into the Atlantic Ocean and you say, Bertha, yes, there's a fin right behind you. I was with the seminarians in uh, Martha's Vineyard once and there was a big, big, big mm. seminarian. He was Irish. He was white as white could be. And I said to him, Pat, there's a fin right behind you. And I'm going, whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Doom, 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 doom. And that's why the Jaws movie just came out. Nice guy. Remember the Jaws movie? Yeah. And I just, I mean, this guy was big and juicy looking. I mean, he was big and juicy. I mean, <laughs> I had my streaks in me. So, the sea, the sea, everybody say yeah. 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 The sea was very, very scary. Especially during the day, nighttime, it was extra scary. Amen? So now they're going to throw, now think of Jesus. You can see a lot of New Testament references here, can't, can't we? And now watch, this is really good, good stuff. And then he says that, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the fishermen feared the Lord. So all of a sudden, now draw the connection. What did, what did, what did Jonah say? Go back to verse what? Verse number 9. See it? I fear the Lord. Now, now what did they do? They feared the Lord. Now here's my question to you. Yeah, he evangelized them. Now, now here's, let me show you about evangelization. Even though people think negative of you, you can still evangelize. For example, one day they told me in seminary, I'm going to turn a lot of people off because I talk about Jesus too much. So they told me negatively that I was positively in God. But like in Matthew 27 and 28, they, they, they said, don't tell anybody he is risen from the dead. So they went around. What did they just say to you? Don't tell anybody he's risen from the dead. Don't tell anybody he's risen from the dead. Don't tell. So what did he say? Don't tell anybody he's risen from the dead. Don't tell anybody he's risen from the dead. And um, when he got out on the street, 
I'm not to tell you that he's risen from the dead. You're not, he's risen from the dead. He's not risen. So guess what? The word got out anyway. Amen? Even though they had a kind of a negative approach to it. Kind of funny how God works, isn't it? Great. And then watch this. Then the men feared the Lord. Up oh, there's that word again. Exceedingly. See it? So, all right, what, what's, what, what did we just learn? So it's repeat, repeat. So the men feared, feared. You got it? Yare, yare. Y a r e, y a r e. The men feared, feared. What I would like to do, if you're interested, one day, is just to read this in Hebrew. Don't get nervous. I don't mean Hebrew that you got to read the Hebrew. Read it exactly as it's translated. How many would like to read it in addition yes. exactly yes. as it's yes. translated? Because this is see right now we're subject to the translators of it. Mm-hmm. Everybody know what I mean? Yes. We, the translators look at this in Hebrew and try to give us our best English words. Mm-hmm. And when they do, it doesn't really say that. So it does not say in the original, does not say in the original Hebrew exceedingly. So uh, let's translate this in Hebrew now. He says there, the men feared, feared the Lord. You got that? Mm-hmm. And they offered up a sacrifice to the Lord. Whoa. Whoa. So now they come into, how do you meet God? Only through sacrifice. Now, in every world religion, you can only meet God when you offer sacrifice to Him. So when you go to church on Sundays, what do we call it? The holy sacrifice. Amen? Sacrifice of praise. Sac- Anything you should do should be a sacrifice. Then he says to them, and they offered a sacrifice to him, and they made vows. So they started swearing. They, they oath themselves. So if you, if you circle the word vows, they oath themselves. How do you say make vows? You take the word seven. S-H-E-V-A. Sheva. They seven themselves to the Lord. How many sacraments are there? Seven. 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 So they seven themselves. <coughs> So they Shabbat, Shabbat. Wow. I mean, these guys are getting converted, aren't they? Now, now, as we close here, verse 17. And the Lord appointed a great... See the word great again? Mm -hmm. There's another Gadol. So for your homework, write me a paper tonight on Gadol. (laughs) And the Lord appointed a Gadol to swallow up Jonah. Now, it has been proven down through the course... How many ever heard of Moby Dick and all those yeah. memory? I don't know if you ever read that or saw the movie and whatever else. It's been proven whales can swallow people. Yeah. That has been already uh, scientifically proven. Do I ask you to try it? No. <laughs> okay? To see if you can fit in. Amen? 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 And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days. Now when you start reading, the first time we have the third day incident in the Bible is Genesis 22. Now, when you're swallowed by a fish, what would you start doing? Praying. <laughs> Praying a lot. Now, my question to you, Bible scholars, is, is Jonah glad he's alive or wishes he were dead? So if you're thrown into the sea, somebody made a catch out there in the middle of the night or the middle of the darkness and the storms. Amen? Now, what happened is Peter starts walking on the water and he starts going in. Jesus made a catch. When Jesus says to us, you're the only ones on your block that will get this. When Jesus says to you are fishers of men, do you know what the Greek says there? When he says, you're fishers of men, he says, catch them alive. That's what the Greek says. And then I'll clean them up. Catch them alive. When you, th- when you see in Greek the word for forgiveness of sins, do you know it's very close to another word in Greek? The Greek word is aphimi. A-P-H-I-E-M-I. Aphimi. A-P-H-I-E-M-I is very close to pronunciation to another word called liberty. Aphesi. A-P-H-E-S-I. Aphesi. So when we hear aphemi, aphesi, it sounds like a play on the words there. So when Jesus says there, you're forgiving your sins, aphemi, in Greek, it sounds like aphesi, which means liberty. 
Interesting, isn't it? So now, what happens? Look at chapter 2. Wait, we're, we're almost done with the book, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it you like Jonah? Yeah. So now, what, what, what does he do? Let's introduce this to us. He starts to do what? Pray. A lot. A lot. A lot, all right? So how, how many are in agreement now? He's in there three days. He's getting fish juice on. Right? You, you got fish juice? When he, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Now Jesus is going to use that as a what? The grave. Mine says shell. Right. Out of the That's the Hebrew, shale. right. Shale. Now, now watch this. This is the first time I ever shared this information. The first time ever. You're the class. You're the class, my dear. When people went to Sheol, which is, the, which is right. Everybody in there, S-H-E-O-L. And remember Jesus descended there. This is the first time I ever shared this information. Uh, ever. Um, how many ever heard Jesus say to the thief on the cross, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23, you ever hear that? Yes. Now watch this. I, I, be, I, I began understanding more about Sheol. Sheol had a lower level where people would go probably to the cooker ultimately. But on the top level, it was called paradise. So when Jesus says, and you hear this in readings and whatever, Jesus says, and, and I'm just discovering this information like Sunday night. Jesus said to the thief, Luke 23, you will be with me in paradise. Here's what he was saying. You're going to be with me in the upper level. Because in a few moments, I'm going to die. And where am I going after I die? I'm going right down to Sheol. But where am I going? I'm going to announce the gospel to paradise people. And my voice is going to go down into the damned. Because everybody has to hear and see what they missed. So when he says to the thief next to me on the cross, this day you shall be with me in paradise. So guess what? You're the only ones that know this. He takes the thief with him that go into paradise and before he's, Ephesians chapter 4, before he raises from the dead. When's he going to be raised from the dead? Well, he's going to wait till Resurrection Sunday. Isn't that interesting? I, I never shared that with anybody before. See, it's good to keep studying, amen? I'm wondering what the other thief thought of. The other thief was in the lower... He was... Jesus preached to them. What did Jesus say to them? I am the way, truth, and life. No one. What else did Jesus say to them? He quoted scriptures. Because when you read Luke 24 on Resurrection Sunday, he started preaching that. So what did they hear down there? They heard that he was the long-awaited Messiah, Mashiach. And then the thief then went down with him. So how many know he did take someone down with him? Interesting, isn't it? Mm. And then, on Resurrection Sunday, right. in and, and, and Matthew 27, 51, it says some, some of the people came walking out. Right. We don't know who they were. They go to now, when you read Ephesians 4, it says Jesus captivated captivity. And then he took those souls from Sheol and took them into a heavenly place. Now, a lot of times I said paradise is, and I've been correct on this, paradise is a walled garden city. You can only, now listen, listen to what I'm going to say. You can only get there if you're invited. What did Jesus do to the thief next to him on the cross? You're invited to paradise. What is paradise? It's the suburbs before you go into heaven. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. And then, now, what was the next level called? You, you heard this word about one million times, but we're, we're going to cross T's and dot I's tonight. Amen? The next level after paradise is called Hades. Okay? So where did that other thief go? It looks like Hades. And those who go to Hades are ready to go down into Tartarus and the pit, which is the ultimate place of hell, where Big D will, will be ultimately. Yes, sir? Good stuff? Yeah, no, actually, I never thought of this before. I'm giving you good stuff. 
Nobody could go to heaven before the ascension. That's and correct. Jesus says to me, that's, so that's correct. on the ascension. That's correct. Days, right? That's correct. Or 30 days. That's the correct. Resurrection. Yeah. So, so he couldn't but, have meant paradise heaven because right. of this day. Right. Okay. I've heard some Catholic interpretations of them, really and every Catholic interpretation I heard about that went, no, no, no. Good stuff. Yeah. That's brand new, hot off the yeah. press. Yeah. How'd you discover them? Other than when I, I study. But what's the source? Like, what did you just? I, I have I have teachers and. I'm, I'm studying right now some of the information I gave you is a priest at Seton Hall. He wrote a book on Luke Pablo Gadans. So and these are these are great scholars. So I keep reading and getting more information for us. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to pick up there, Lord willing, next week uh, when we go into Sheol, and then we get a little surprise coming for uh, Yona. Did you like Yona, Miss Kathy? Yes. Yes. Can I vote for the next one? Being Miss Kathy being would like to vote for the next one. I would like Ephesians. She would like Ephesians. Me too. I like Ephesians. Do you want Ephesians? I nice. second. All right. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. When you were telling us about the of God, and the other of God is the meaning of wisdom. Proverbs 1 7. Proverbs 1 7. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for the prophet because. His story is our story. All the times you've given us a word and we didn't do it, omission, uh, omission, by the times we didn't think an idea and we just said no to you. So Lord, erase our no's, forgive us that sin and bring us to the yes where we are directed to go and, and talk to your message, even if it's our beloved enemies. Yes. Bless, them, bless our enemies. Bless those who war against us. And Lord, uh, and bring our enemies to salvation in Jesus Christ also. Glory to Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, for all world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I gave you a slew of dates. Did you get them all? Yes. Yes. Okay, you're all in.